Hi guys. Well, today no tear down. Don't want to bore you all the times with tear downs. Yeah, it's a joke. Uh, this time we're with design. It's design time again. It's a design that is quite, quite old, but um, I use it a lot and I wanted to show it to you. Let me show you what that is. Many times in my designs, I need um, isolated voltages. For example, when designing a high voltage power supply and I need bias voltages or auxiliary voltages for the uh, instrumentation to show the current and, and, and voltage or for other things, I need isolated voltages. And every time I needed to you I needed to use to buy ready-made DC DC converters, just isolated DC DC converters, that I had to adapt to them because I couldn't get what I needed. So and because mostly I use voltages between 20 and 24 volts or I have them, I built this thing. This is an isolated four output. It has four isolated output and one primary output, power output, fly back converter, not a fly back. Uh, it is an isolated back converter. This thing is yeah, first of first, uh, I think um, Texas Instruments came out with us with this design. Now you see it in many times, and it's supported by Wirth Electronics, by Coilcraft. They're making transformers for that, etc. But my idea was not to again take something fixed. I wanted to make the transformer by myself, and to to have the voltages. Or the ratios as I need it. And this is why for the first time, honestly, I did a transformer by myself because I don't like to do that. Yeah, I rather use off the shelf components, but this time I did it. So let me show you how the schematic of this thing looks. Let's go back. Ooh, we have to go way back here. The whole idea is a synchronous, based on a synchronous back, back, uh, <laughs> sorry, back converter. I'm not using the Texas Int so much once because at that time when I started to design these things, I didn't have them. But I had a lot of this MPS, MP2303 that are readily available, cheap, and are a long time in use. The only thing is they need a little bit too many components for com compensation and these things. But anyway, these are just standard design issues that you can find in the data sheet of the MP2303. So this is the design I made. The key part, except of the, the second key part, except of the Synchronous and ha it has to be a synchronous um, converter is the transformer itself. I'm using a pentafiller, yeah, it's called a pentafiller winded transformer on a toroid core that gives me four isolated outputs with each one a little bit a base load. 5 to 10 milliamps, I think I calculated it at 12 of its 5 milliamps or something like that. This is all adjustable, just uh, just solder different value resistors in you know, on the outputs. Two capacitors, 22 microfarads, and we have beautiful isolated outputs. And the main output is the regulated output. These outputs here just track more or less the main output. Uh, it is very important to have a somehow okay regulation that the coupling of the windings is very tight. 
and I see you and I show you how I did it with my own transformer on a toroid. The caps here, yeah, you can use more or less. It is one, two, three, four, five, six. It is six. I, I, I prepared for six caps in parallel. 1206. The, all the caps that are for the input and for the output are 1206 at least. So you so you have more or less your 22 microfarads even at 12 volts output huh? because we know that the capacitance of the ceramic capacitors because these are ceramic capacitors except if you want tantal, tantal ones and you don't have the problem but ceramics are very uh, uh, are a frequency and voltage and temperature and size dependent so uh, if you take for example a 0603 22 microfarad yeah if you if you test it on a LCR meter you will get more or less 22 microfarads but if you start to put a voltage across that the capacitance will fall like that this is why it's because of the material you use. I use at least X5 air or X7 air, etc. Because it's the material that is at least susceptible to uh, voltage and, and, and temperature. And the size. The size is very important. A 22 microfarad, for example, 1210, will be much nearer to the 22 microfarads at the output when a voltage is applied here than a 0603. So, rule of thumb, output capacitors, if you use ceramics, try to use larger packages, as large as possible. Even if you say, okay, I don't have the, the, the room, I don't have the... Use uh, higher values and higher packages. So, this is what I wanted to say. The whole design is so that uh, you get on the secondaries on each up to 300 milliamperes, no more. And it depends how many out, it, the, the whole output would be a total between 14 and 16 watts. This is variable. It, that means that it depends. You can use, for example, here, I don't know, 100 milliamperes only, only with one uh, secondary winding, and then use the rest of the power on the primary winding. Or mix it, two, one, do whatever you want. This is the idea why I made the transformer by myself. So I can, I can, I can customize it as ever I want. And um, I used because again, I had many of these things. I used a Micrometals Arnold HF 080 2 That's a 20.32 external diameter. And it has a permeability of 160 mu and 87 IL, that's the inductance factor. These two parameters should be as low as possible for switch mode power supplies. So calculated a 33 microhenry inductor out of using these parameters and I came out with 19 windings and I'm using a 0.5 millimeter wire. So that's it. But about the coupling now, the most important thing, as I said, is the coupling because otherwise you will have a very bad regulation, by the way. This is the micrometals blue um, core what I used. I will put links in the in the description for all of that. Then just a few informations of how flyback buck works. As you see here, we just add an, an additional winding on a existing synchronous buck converter and then you have more or less a flyback converter and you have an isolated here you can use much more secondary windings so now let's see this for example 
is a pentafiller one that I made. You see it here? The five separated uh, coils or windings are twisted tightly together and then wound over the uh, over the, the ferrite over the toroid core. This way you have the tightest possible coupling between the windings. The next thing, the next uh, good thing about the toroid is that it encloses the magnetic field in its core and you have less EMI, radiated EMI than other open core or other di or different cores that are not isolated, uh, not, not screened no, or not shielded. So, again, this is how the maximum number of windings is wound on this micro -anodes transformer and it's moving. So, this is how the ready-made DC-DC looks. We have the input capacitors, the synchronous switch mode chip, SMD potentiometer to regulate the output, and the connectors for the four isolated outputs. And here you have on the top the, uh, the minimal load resistors to give you 5 to 10 milliampers per output. On the right side you have the output capacitors. On the bottom we have the Schottky diodes for the, for the isolated outputs and the two capacitors. That's it. This is, I used it a lot and mostly on power supplies. For example, this design I made again a while ago, but I never finished it because at the end it didn't give me the power I wanted and I needed more power. So I forgot it. It is a zero to 800 volt power supply based on a readily available transformer, a Chinese transformer. But I don't want to explain this. The secondary, <laughs> the secondary part here is, is uh, powered or was powered by this thing that I made. And it looks like that. Here you have it. And that was the secondary. This is, this is how it was connected. Completely isolated. And you see on the secondary side, I have an LC filter more or less. LC means uh, LC, really LC and a dedicated ferrite bit and an LDO because this thing here is not, the regulation is not that good that you can use it, or mostly you cannot use it directly on sensitive equipment or sensitive uh, designs. So I always use LC in combination with a ferrite bit and an LDO, just for explanation. Okay, let's get it back. Let me show you a little bit how this thing performs. Sorry that the whole thing got a little bit darker, but if I open my light, you will see the multiplex display here is completely flashing and that's awful. So I prefer to do it like that. 
little bit more in the middle. Let's see what we can do. Let's attach this thing to. Okay, you cannot see it, but I will show you later. So the whole setup is I have 24 volts here from my trusty Corart KA3005P power supply that I did a deer down and a complete schematic explanation. And the primary output, I have my new toy, a, comp, a, a Konkin electronic load that I set to one amps. And at the isolated side, no, you cannot see anything here. That's awful. How should I do that? Yeah, here I have to turn it on. I have an external miniature uh, electronic load, an XY-FZ35, that goes up to 25 volts and mm, I think 3 or 5 amp amps, that's 35 watts. And I set it to 30 milliamps, uh, 300 milliamps the output. So that's... I activated the 24 volts, so I have here 12 volts at the output at 30, 300 milliamps. And now we get flashing probably, or I hope not. Anyway, let's turn it off again. 24 volts and output 2.4 volts. And here you have again, nothing, 12.05 volts. So you see the regulation is not that um, yeah, dramatic. This is why you should use, or I use, always an LDO after that. Yeah, well, as I said, 14 to 16 watts, up to up to five, up to, up to four isolated outputs. Nothing gets really warm, and it's the size of a small. Where's the other one? Here it is. It's the size of a small Chinese DC-DC converter. Schematics and design files are available on request. So, and now the most important. Guys, if you like what you see, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up, press the like button, subscribe to my channel, please. Press the notification button so you get uh, information uh, notified when I have new videos. This, every th all these things help me to grow my channel and to show you much more. You see, this is, I don't know from when it is, let me, uh, yeah, I cannot see it now. Uh, I made quite a lot of versions that go back, back to 28 or something. The next version of that will have a different switching chip. It would be a completely Asian brand, for the, only for the Asian market, but much better than this, this old MPS one. Yeah, when I have it finished, I will show you. So, that's all for today. I hope it's a little short, the video is a little shorter. Again, this is the schematic. Design files will be available, but as is. You have to know, you have to understand what you're doing for that. This is, yeah, a few changes in the comp uh, compensation, etc., will give you different results. So that's it for today. Hope you like this small design with this pentafiller. Torrid Transformer. See you next time, guys. Cheers. Thank you.